we're going to talk about it. Here you go, Corey. It's all you, brother. Yeah, for sure. But bam. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so this next one uh, comes to us from, I got it from Road and Track, mm-hmm. and it's the Koenigsegg. Um, they're putting, they, they basically unveiled their Quark electric mm-hmm. motor. And so it's a uh, a motor that weighs just 66 pounds and puts out some impressive figures. And uh, the thing about it is it kind of was, um, they had to re-engineer some, some, some basically electric engines because of their Gamera hypercar. And uh, that's a whole other thing, but that thing's quite impressive. But the numbers that they put out, they were talking, they had to change different power plants. And if you guys keep track of Kunisek at all, you know they are pretty good at innovating um, in their technology or their engineering. Oh, yeah. And so the idea here is, uh, the, the long and the short of it is, if you take a look at the picture, it's quite a small form factor. Really? Uh, and again, coming in just at 63 pounds, putting out 335 horsepower, 443 pounds mm-hmm. of torque. But the kind of the thing I wanted to take uh, that, if you get any like engineering kind of people out there, it's it's striking a good balance between the two form factors of electric motor engineering, axial flow or radio flow flux. And uh, I have another article down below if you want to look at exactly like what that means. But it's pretty cool because they're kind of combining some concepts that were not always combined uh, to give it a leg up in generating a good amount of power, yep. but also a good amount of torque. And so um, uh, Mike's going to take it away with some other like applications. But I mean, you guys know we talk about cars, we talk about aviation, we talk. There's a bunch of cool places that they could go with this or this tech could go. So what do you think? Well, that's the best thing. First of all, it's the tech, right? It's the weight of this thing is what is it? 60 pounds, right? So the the weight to horsepower ratio. So it's we're talking 300 horsepower. And I think it can do 300 horsepower for a 20 second burst. Roughly, right? Right. Around 300. Wait, let me make sure. I just want to make sure this is this is correct. Um, so this one was the... Mike's going to have to search for it in the article. It's 335 horsepower, okay? Right. And 443 pounds of torque for 20 seconds. Okay, so here's the thing. I wonder if there's a happy medium, because after that, it puts out 134 horsepower and 184 foot-pounds of torque, right? Uh, Mm -hmm. which it can just run on for a long time, and then it can come back and do another spurt. So my question is, is there a happy medium to where this thing could be adapted to do, like, 200 horsepower and then do 175 the whole way through? Is there a place where this thing could do that? or Because that kind of gives me that happy medium of what other applications this is going to be put in. Because as you drop the information about, yeah, it could be in aerospace, it could be in other applications. But really, there's a sweet spot at 200 and 175, I would say, especially at that weight. What's your thoughts? Yeah, exactly. I mean, the, the this is kind of the first thing we know about this design that they're they're putting out, and we know. I mean, they're going to continue to innovate and do some other stuff with it. And kind of going right off of the the backside of that, talking about something else that they unveiled, and the same same general idea is something called the Terrier. And the Terrier from Kunoseg is two quarks uh, made it together with some planetary gears, but also having its own onboard inverter. So it's a, it's a more powerful package. Mm. And so, the, so this Terrier, two quarks with an inverter in there, puts out 670 horsepower at 811 foot-pounds. And that whole package, uh, obviously no batteries, but that whole package there is just the 187 pounds. Um, so this is pretty <laughs> interesting. And I, I, I was thinking as I was looking at this, I'm like, this is literally drop-in uh, swap for oh my God. EVs who want to have some crazy numbers. Um, and... Um, it's pretty impressive. I thought it was pretty cool. I mean, the thing, the places they could go with this after that, you <laughs> Back know, in time. some interesting things here. <laughs> well, yeah, obviously some really, really cool stuff with that too, but, um, it, yeah, it's, it's pretty can I put interesting. One in a motorcycle. Okay. Look, if you could put one in a motorcycle, first of all, for a 20 second blast, I don't think you could hold on for 300 horsepower unless you were literally doing something in a, in a, like, Literally in a in a drag bike, right? That's that's just the frame. That yeah, you have yeah, to have yeah. With on. the with the with the gear, tricycle yeah. gear. But right o- there, at yeah. only 187 pounds and 670 horsepower and 811 torque, foot pound of torque. Forget about it. This thing is mm-hmm. dragster ready. If you put four of those together or two of them together, right? Just think of the things you mm-hmm. could do. Suddenly, you have basically a little over a 360 pound four engine device and if you could stuff this in a helicopter that you could alter those torque numbers a little bit right and yes. have one that would be basically a a standby or redundant power source or run them in some sort of lean mode together all the time these four motors and then if one should go out you got you got 20 seconds of life-saving power there that that means the difference between finding a good landing spot and not 
And that that's a real application where this could really go into an electric helicopter, I think. Yeah, that that's the uh, that's kind of the interesting thing I th- I thought about this too is that they've really kind of capitalized on the idea of form factor, but yeah. also still getting the torque numbers they want out. Because we know Kunaseg, they're really uh, again hypercars. They they even mentioned the article that they kind of designed this to get the car moving to kind of yeah. you know get that burst of speed you need, low speed, which is again torque. If you know anything about getting cars mm-hmm. moving quickly, it's that low end torque you need, not just straight power. Um, and that lends itself quite well to, as you said, helicopter aviation. You need, you know, a good amount of steady and powerful torque numbers uh, on uh, on the rotating components and helicopter applications. Sure. And uh, you know, I'll pick, pick, kick it back to you here in just a second. But I wanted to mention uh, there's a graph they also have, and uh, it's it's on just the single quark um, power versus torque specs. You can see basically that the the 20 second peak on torque and power goes all the way up, and they mate at uh, 600 uh, newton meters of mm-hmm. torque right at 4,000 RPM. This is the 20 second burst. So again, uh, main, keeping in mind it's electric. Uh, if you had a capacitor with the requisite amount of energy, yes, you could certainly use it as a, an emergency to get the get uh, that amount of torque you would need for at least 20 seconds in this case for single application. And it's seems like it would be you know, really, really fit that bill pretty oh, well. Yeah, I mean, uh, so look, they they engineered this thing to do the right job at the right time at the right place. Right. Mm-hmm. Literally, they've timed it for 20 seconds. It's a great pulse right off the line, like you said, for their for the Gamera, which is going to be their supercar that's going to integrate into this. Right. However, it really does play to the fact that there's other applications, just like you said, that are, are highly sought after. Mm-hmm. Right. I could see people standing in line if they wanted a traditional quadcopter design like a Phantom 4, putting one of these on each corner, and your initial torque liftoff numbers, oh right? Yeah, oh I mean, my. look, you're, and, or... You're talking like EV tolls, not yeah. even, like, yeah, like bigger cargo yeah, cargo quads, quads something of that nature, and then the other part of it is, what about a racing, a real racing quad, right? A real one like we've seen for the one that we covered last week, um, something like this type of power system going into it. So basically, if you had like your your DRS kind of situation in, in a Formula One race, where if you needed that yeah, extra yeah. 20 seconds of passing power, whatever it is, and you get down a, you know, this quote unquote straightaway blast off and bam, you know, here you are doing literally three times the speed you were before. Now, we're treating blade stall notwithstanding or whatever other situation we're going to find aerodynamically. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, 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 um, yeah. But... I mean, hats off to who do you think's really got the advantage now? Is is Rimac really the you know the top dog, really in EV development when we're talking about these super speeds, or is Koenigsegg really proving their weight in the fact that they're not only just taking electric in in one stage and making it a one stage application for their vehicle, but also producing something else that has wide appeal that they could make as a sellable object outside their supercar. Yeah, I do wonder uh, what Koenigsegg really is looking to do as far as sharing this tech with other applications mm-hmm. outside of their automobiles. Um, they're always a, an interesting company to keep track of because, again, they do things, at a, you know, they make things happen that you're kind of like, wow, I didn't actually think they could really fit that in that form factor or get that amount of power out of that type, type, size power plant or whatever it is. And they're, it's always interesting to watch what they're coming out with, coming right. up with. Um, but again, as the, they mentioned a while back, and of course, and now we're covering it now, they they said, hey, hybrid powertrains is the way they want to go because if you know about Koenigsegg, they're not they're not going to get rid of their their um, internal combustion no. power plants. Uh, at least they haven't mentioned they're going to. So they're... pairing this with a amazing uh, output um, uh, ice engine is is just a no brainer, really. At least for them, right? For certain. But yeah, I'd be interested to see where they where people can leverage this tech for. Well, forget other about the fact that they have a three cylinder. It's also going to be making six hundred horsepower, right? So you're you're, mm-hmm. you're they're yeah, yeah. really oh, yeah. not stopping that level of innovation. They're giving you a little bit of everything on the forefront, which I think it does make it the perfect adaptation of what our electric slash ice future and hypercar future should look like at the moment. Right, you're gonna get the best of both worlds, and and that thing's gonna go 248 miles an hour. So, I mean, what else could you expect? Yeah, yeah. So, hey, yeah, and it's a four door, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. It's, and I it's, mean, four, it's just... and it, wait, and it's not <laughs> ugly either. Yeah, it's, yeah. Well, it's not yep. a four door; it's a four seater, but it's a one door design, oh, I think, yes. or maybe it was a hybrid design yep. door kind of thing. Uh, kind of neat. All right. Well, I I am fascinated by Pretty this. Cool. When you sent it Pretty to cool. me earlier in the week, I nearly, I literally was like, wow. 
like you, you can't you you just, just wow, wow that's like, cool <laughs> it's like game changer there's there's stuff out in the tech world that's still gonna yeah. be game changer and this is game changer mm-hmm. so yep so so yeah so if you're done uh, that thanks so much for that uh, please like share subscribe we'll, we're always looking for these kind of cool little things to share with you guys whether it's from automobiles or you know aerospace actual um uh, cars and obviously aviation we're still into that too so thanks for all the support and uh, we'll continue to bring you what we find you thanks go. so much awesome I awesome find I, 